Director of Vault Training at Viva Systems. Once again, joined by my good friend, founder and CEO of Learn About GMP, Graham O'Keefe. And we've been having a fascinating and thought-provoking set of conversations around the relationship, I was gonna say the right relationship, but let's just call it any relationship uh, between e-learning technologies and e-learning content and how life sciences companies should be thinking about navigating the selection of each. I wanna jump back into a topic that I know you've referenced in one of our previous conversations, about how you manage the updates and retraining process around e-learning content libraries. This is something that drove Viva to get into the training technology space. It's historically really, really hard, costly and time consuming to connect um, a regulated document management system with a third party learning management system so that customers can ensure they are automatically retraining in a timely fashion on updated control documents. We know that process has to happen for compliance purposes. It's a little bit less obvious, I think, to many of our customers how the same process occurs with an e-learning library, how you should be managing it, and then how you should be triggering retraining when, say, an introduction to uh, GMP course is updated. Graham, let's talk about this. You know, what are some of your core SLAs and, and core I'd say commitments to your customers around updates and how you help them navigate that process. Yeah, and that's one of the most difficult aspects of what we do, like is keeping the libraries current, keeping them updated and aligning them with any changes that happens to, to regulations, guidelines, standards, et cetera, et cetera. So what we do is like we have, we have our own uh, in-house QA team that keep abreast of, of any regulatory updates that happen to any of the courses in our library. So, you know, we know exactly when these updates are gonna happen. And then we will set up project time to actually make the updates to the courses before we republish them as, as a new version, for example. We also work with our SMEs on a, on a monthly basis as well. We talk to them to ensure that, you know, that we're talking to them and they understand as well when updates are coming down the line and they'll know anyway, because they're, they're, so, they're so into these topics that, you know, they keep abreast of them anyway. And we also have weekly calls with all our clients and we know exactly what's coming down the line in terms of, of new regulations and standards and guidelines and updates that are going to happen. So we have that kind of three phased approach and we like to think that we don't let anything slip through the cracks. So, I mean, it's even talking to our clients recently, you know, everybody knows the new EU MDR is coming down the line. It's going to be, you know, live this year. Um, so, you know, we started that production of, of that online program about eight months ago. So it's, that's a huge mm -hmm. regulation, you know. So, you know, we understand from working with the customers as well what they need and what, what they see are, are, are really cornerstones of their educational programs going forward too. I don't think, so just full disclosure, I've worked for e-learning content providers um, in a few different parts of my career. I've never heard any of them say that consistent weekly contact with their customers was a key factor in making sure they knew how to update their content libraries. They usually feel like they have to take that process on kind of all by themselves. So yeah. talk to me a little bit about how that evolved. That's fascinating. And I think it's also an incredibly um, smart way to do things. Yeah, I mean, like it's only when you talk to your customers, you realize where you need to go with the company itself and the direction that, you know, that libraries need, need to go in. Like, so, I mean, just to take like that, that EU or MDR example, like we work with a number of multinational medical device companies and, you know, I, I actually speak to two of them on a weekly basis. And we've, we've had this conversation for the last 12 months about EU MDR, it's common. How are we going to train our people? How are we going to ensure that, you know, we're, when we get audited that, you know, the, our workforce have been trained on the various regs and that we'd be able to keep selling our devices to the European Union. So it, it's only through those discussions that you realize, hold on a second, we need to act on this now. We need to ensure that our customers stay abreast of this and are ready for that when it, when it comes about. Because you know, when regulations change, you know, there's big shifts that have to happen within organizations. And especially when something like EU NDR comes down the line, that's a huge, huge regulatory change. So yeah. workforces have to be ready before any of this kicks off. Great, and I think you did a good job articulating how you keep abreast of changes, how you think about them in the context of industry need by talking to customers. How do you then go about working with and communicating to customers what has been changed, maybe how they should process it, who should be retrained on it? Because I think the back end portion of updating a library is, is sometimes the most challenging for customers, making yeah. sure they know that changes have been made and then what they should do with them. 
Yeah, so like we have, you know, internal communication mechanisms with all our clients. So when we update courses, we'll, we'll send them communications around the courses, around regulations that have changed, et cetera, et cetera, and what courses that, you know, have been changed as a result of that. So, you know, we're, we're very, very agile in terms of how we do this. And, you know, if you speak to any of our customers, our customer, our customer service is really what separates us as well, you know, because, you know, people need to be able to reach out to companies like ours and, and get instant feedback and get instant changes yeah. because everything's moving quickly now. So, um, you know, we're very much aware of that, but we keep everything centrally managed here. So it's easy for us to actually, you know, deliver the changes then to each customer as they happen. One of the topics of, of our conversations previously was selecting the right e-learning content provider. And we talked about being consultative, making sure that that provider has the right subject matter expertise and the right uh, interactive development capabilities. I think what you just articulated though is as important maybe as any of those things because having up-to-date expert content is really only important if you know it's there and you know how to use it. So yeah. ensuring that you have a strong communication capability with customers to redeploy new assets is, is hypercritical, Graham. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, and, and the agility around that, I mean, not too many providers you know, offer that. So, I mean, that sets us apart really as well. Yeah, great. I think that's a good point for us to stop this particular topic. And I'll be interested to hear how your business has changed now trying to update continuously smaller micro learning assets. That's something I want to get into. So let's hold that off for another video. Uh, appreciate you joining me, Graham, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Kevin.